Well, welcome back to the Energy Sovereignty Project. A little bit of a view change here. Uh, this is a quick topic that's relating to the state of battery charge. Now, this is something that we touched on, oh, I don't know, I say probably about three or four months ago when we were uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, what was going to happen during summer. And we had discussed that a mode of operation during the summer might be that one would charge the batteries only to about 50% or so. And then what that would do is that it would allow for more power to be sent to the grid because the batteries would charge early. And if you didn't need the additional power, well, then that would be a normal mode. It would help save on the life of the batteries, make them last longer. Now, ideally, this would be a setting that we would be able to do in the app itself. You'd be able to set it just like you'd be able to set the car to charge to a state of 40%, 50%, 60%, what have you, to accommodate your needs. And then what it would also then be able to do if it was app related is that it would be able to do that on the fly or you would be able to set it with the app or it would even be able to be done uh, again through a preset um, uh, a set of circumstances. In other words, um, uh, if it had left the charge at a particular state depleted, that then the following day that it would then take that into account, charge it to a higher state, you get the idea. So we can't do that. There's no way to do that in the app. And the Powerwall itself is a little confusing in how it's going to let you turn it off. Now, there is a nuclear option, that being to actually turn the Powerwall off at the breaker. In that instance, the system would simply physically not be able to power the system or charge the batteries off of those batteries that had been shut off. And so it'll be interesting to find out how the system deals with that. But to start us off, I'm curious as to what these switches do. Now, my thought is, is that these switches control the communications bus and that by turning these off, that then it will disconnect the communications from the system and then the power walls will not be considered to be a part of that system and therefore the charge rate will reflect the fact that these two power walls are missing. So let's, uh, let's try that out. It may take about an hour or so. I'm gonna pull the app up here so that you can uh, 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 see it real quick on the bottom. I'll, I'll magnify that a little bit. So currently what it's saying is it's showing us that there are six power walls present. Now when we make adaptations on the app or sometimes I'm thinking at the power wall, if we click that switch, it's probably gonna be, it's gonna, probably gonna take up to an hour for the Tesla uh, gateway to transmit all that data, communicate with Tesla, get the information back, and then show that has changed on the app. And so we're gonna go ahead and shut these switches off and then see what the app tells us in an hour. Heard a click, so that's good. So now let's go ahead and wait and see what the system tells us. Okay, welcome back. It's a little over an hour later and the, um, system is still recognizing the six uh, Powerwall batteries, at least as far as the app is concerned. And so now basically we're looking at uh, watching the physical reality of what happens to that charge. And so when we started this, the batteries were at 20%. And so we've got 16.4 uh, kilowatt hours in the batteries right now. Uh, or we did, now we're up to about 21% or so. But when we started this, uh, uh, that, was, uh, that was where we were. And so we've shut off those two power walls. And so the reduction of two power walls should leave us uh, around 54.6 kilowatt hours total. Again, that's um, going by that 82, uh, 82 kilowatt hours that we know we have solid in the batteries, minus the, the two that we supposedly shut off. And so, now what we're looking at is we'll be monitoring the app to see how much power goes into the power wall. And it's very handy that the Tesla Gateway gives us access to that, uh, that information, that's great. And so now what we're going to be looking at is for a, um, a power wall in number of 38.2 kilowatt hours. If we exceed 38.2 kilowatt hours, then turning off those switches did nothing. Um, if it then stops, and start sending power uh, out to the grid after bringing in only 38.2 kilowatt hours, then we're golden and we know that turning off those switches actually works. 
If it didn't do anything, well, then we're gonna to have to revisit this test tomorrow where I'll basically do the exact same thing, deplete the system down to 20%, only this time, We'll go with the nuclear option, and that will be to actually physically shut off the breakers to the power wall, and that'll mean that not only is the communications potentially shut off, but everything is shut off. There is no physical path to actually get power to those two uh, power wall batteries, and then that will certainly force the system to accept that it doesn't have any place to put that power. Uh, so that's about it. So let's go ahead and reconvene at two o'clock or so and uh, we'll see if the system cut off at uh, 38.2 kilowatt hours of, of input or whether or not it just ignored the whole thing. Okay, so a couple of things here first. Um, I uh, had started off initially with turning off two of the power walls, but then I started looking at two things, looked at how my day was going. I needed to actually get on the road eventually today. But uh, also, I looked back at the history of the pr daily production, and it seemed like that was kind of cutting it a little close. Initially, we were looking at, uh, what do we got here? Uh, initially, we were looking at uh, taking on about 38.2 kilowatt hours uh, with uh, just the two power walls turned off. And so in turning off that third one, uh, that uh, brought it to 24.6. Now, of course, I did actually leave the system run for a little bit um, uh, before I shut that battery off. And so we're, we'll be looking at, you know, somewhere in the middle there would be expected. That's, sorry, that's not as, as um, exacting and scientific as, uh, as I probably should have been kind of running out of time. But uh, the uh, results are looking uh, looking interesting anyway. So right now, currently the system is sitting at 90%. Now, we have taken on, where are we at? So far we have taken on 29.8 kilowatt hours into the system. There's no way that that brings us up to 90% plus, and it's topping itself off pretty rapidly. So, the interesting thing is that when we look at the main screen, I'll go ahead and take a quick uh, shot of this. When you look at the main screen, um, we are still showing six power walls, so that has to do likely with our account. In other words, what, it, what, Tesla, what Tesla's gateway is sending out uh, to Tesla itself is immaterial. Tesla is the one that says, oh, you've got six power walls, these are their numbers, that kind of a thing. So that's interesting. And so then um, the other thing is that, uh, I'll take another screenshot here showing that 90%, We've obviously recalibrated. The system has obviously recalibrated itself for those three power walls that have been shut off. That's actually great news. That's that would, it's pretty much exactly what we would want to see. Um, I suppose it would be interesting to be able to um, uh, set the system uh, so that it would display a percentage as an aggregate of all the power walls, even the ones that are shut off, but doing what it's doing now where it's recalibrated itself to that is what I expected that I would see um, should the system recognize that three of its batteries were turned off. So um, that's basically it in a nutshell. Now what I'm waiting for is to see uh, and make sure that it will actually engage and start to uh, send power to the grid at an earlier stage than it normally would. And then at that point, I'll uh, make a decision as to whether or not I want to leave these three batteries turned off or not. Uh, I'll give that a bit of a think, and then we can discuss it back in the studio when I close out and compile this video in the morning. All right, well, let's get this sewn up so that we can try and keep this video under 15 minutes. So uh, I was very pleased to find that the system had recalibrated itself. And as I said, I shut down three of the batteries instead of just two, and this allowed the system to come up to 100% much quicker. I needed to get out of there and, and get, my, uh, uh, get my day going. I was going out of town, headed to the um, uh, Bay Area, headed to Sausalito for a round trip and uh, that allowed me to get out much quicker. And so it recalibrated to 100% 
to be 41 kilowatt hours, which is obviously half of the, the entire system. And with that power that was already in the batteries, it only took a little over 30 kilowatt hours before it started sending power back out to the grid. And you can see that here. This system started to peak out around 2.30 uh, and it started to start its switch over uh, and then by 2.37 it had fully switched over and so then at that time the system was showing 100% and that's kind of the final, final validation of what had just happened when we turned those three batteries off. And the way that we verify that was obviously we turn the batteries back on and as soon as we turn the batteries back on we start to charge just what I expected uh, I didn't expect it to happen so quick it happened within a minute or two and so uh, the system reverted to showing 61 percent of charge and then you'll note that this isn't 50%, nor did I expect it to be. The 61% reflects that the system had 20% charge in it when the test started. And then if you divide 20% among the six batteries, you know, 3.33, and then when you recombine um, the uh, three batteries out of the six, then you come up with 10%, and that's exactly the amount that we had in addition to that uh, 50%. Uh, almost to the kilowatt hour and so that tells us something interesting though at least when the batteries are new like they are now the system divides the charge evenly among the batteries instead of trying to play favorites with the modules like the car does now this might be due to a couple of different factors not the least of them is the age of the system I don't have certain cells that were charged more than others. So currently the system, because it's quite new, as well as the fact that all the batteries came online at the same time, and so until just now, they've never been operated separately. And that's about it, really. This is what happens when you choose to turn a few of the batteries off to uh, reduce wear and tear on uh, on the system, or just to send more power out to uh, out to the grid. Uh, so in the case of my own use on this particular day, I left the battery switched on when I left because I'm going out of town and I know that when I come back, I'm going to have to take a large slug of power, both to get the car up to a usable um, percentage, but also because I don't want to leave it uh, in a depleted state. And so obviously when I come back, I want to have as much of that solar energy collected as possible so that then I can turn around and, uh, and, and charge the system. And so, uh, that said, in a few days, I'm going to be taking the car on a cross-country trip to Minnesota. So while we're gone, I'm going to leave the home set up with only three batteries active. And that, is, by design, is to increase the amount of power I send to the grid. And hopefully, I'll be able to have banked so much power in that week that I'm gone that it'll have paid for my entire year's uh, power usage. So that's the plan anyway, and so that'll be fun, and I'll keep you posted on, on how that goes. Uh, might turn out to be a colossal failure, but you know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, the uh, thing that's going to happen when I'm gone is, is that the thing that might kill that idea is the AC being run. Uh, so again, we're talking about this time of year where the temperatures are starting to creep up, but we'll Take a look and see how we sit when I return. And as always, thanks for following along. The best of luck with your own systems. And if you have any questions about anything specifically that I haven't gone over regarding this, again, I'm trying to cut these videos a little short so that folks don't lose interest halfway through. Uh, but uh, feel free to leave a question in the comment section and I'll try to uh, address it. And so uh, until uh, next time, we'll... See you all soon.